Well, hello and welcome to this special debate between the two Democratic candidates for the office of state auditor. The winner on September 6th will face presumptive Republican nominee Anthony Amore. In alphabetical order, the candidates you'll be hearing from today are Chris Dempsey, who served as Assistant Secretary of Transportation in the Patrick administration and director of the advocacy group Transportation for Massachusetts. And Diana DeZoglio, a two-term state senator who previously served four terms in the Massachusetts House. Candidates, welcome to you both. Thanks very much Thank for being John. here. Now, uh, we'll give you each about a minute to answer my questions. Then you're free to engage one another in direct debate. I'll step back out of the way here so I don't, you know, get in the way. Uh, a note to our viewers on Channel 4, by the way, this segment is being edited down from a half hour due to time constraints, but you can view the entire debate on demand on our website, cbsboston.com. Okay, let's begin. If you win, and you'll go first uh, on this first question, we're doing it in alphabetical order. If you win, you'll take office on the 30th anniversary of the Pacheco Law, a set of hurdles for the privatization of state services that has rarely been cleared over the past three decades. Now, as auditor, you'll get the final say on privatization proposals. Do you see any areas of state government, the MBTA for instance, where privatization might provide better service? And as auditor, would you be hostile or open to that? Mr. Dempsey, one minute. John, I'm the only candidate in this race that has been on both sides of the table when it comes to public procurements. I've been inside of government and led procurements that have saved taxpayers money and provided better services. I've also been outside of government working with government as a partner to provide better service. When I was inside of state government, I co-founded the MassDOT program that created all the smartphone apps that tell you in real time when your bus or train will come. It made perfect sense to use outside partners to do that rather than having the MBTA try to build its own app. But in principle, I do think it's important to protect against unnecessary privatization, to make sure that taxpayers are getting good dollars and that the core work of any state agency is being done by public employees that we can trust. All right, thank you, Senator Zaglia. Look, the Pacheco laws you referred to it is actually uh, called the Taxpayer Protection Act for a reason. It is meant to protect taxpayer dollars and make sure that we're spending those tax dollars efficiently and effectively. The auditor has the authority to delve into state contracts and into those procurements and RFPs and take a deep dive with the ability to actually require the production of documents and testimony under oath in those RFP processes and procedures to make sure that they're functioning correctly and that we are getting the best bang for our buck, so to speak. So I would absolutely use the Taxpayer Protection Act to make sure that we are getting the best bang for our buck and that we are making proper decisions as it pertains to state contracting. Uh, but I would also take that to the next level and use that Taxpayer Protection Act and that ability to delve into those contracts to make sure that we are setting equity standards and promoting diversity, equity, and inclusion in our state contracting processes by seeing how our state contracts are actually being given out. As we know, only 0.005% of our state contracts are going out to minority businesses. Mm -hmm. I think that we can use this Taxpayer Protection Act to expand the work of the auditor's office and build upon oh. it to make sure that we're making our process more equitable as well. Okay, thank you. Rebuttal. Well, I'm really proud that I was the first candidate in this race to put out a policy plan of any kind about what I actually wanted to do in the office. And our very, very first plan was on oversight of $5.3 billion in federal stimulus dollars. You can only spend a dollar once, and it's incredibly important that our next state auditor tracks those dollars in real time. We're also adopting many of the recommendations of what's called the racial equity scorecard which was put together by the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts, the NAACP, and the Mass Public Health Association to make sure we invest those dollars and make ways that make our Commonwealth more equitable. Response, if you'd like. I'm so proud to, as the chair of the Senate's Small Business Committee, as the chairwoman, to have worked with the Black Economic Council on provisions to increase the authority of our state supplier diversity office to make sure that the administration is held accountable on diversity, equity, and inclusion in state contracting. And I am the first candidate in this race to have called for a safety audit and committed to do a safety audit of the MBTA, something I think that is incredibly important. My opponent was the Assistant Secretary of Transportation. And the failed transportation culture that we're seeing right now, the trains that are catching on fires, the on fire, the derailments that are happening, those things didn't just start with this administration. They go back years. Public transportation in Massachusetts has never properly served the Commonwealth, the residents of the Commonwealth. And my opponent was part of that failed 
tra culture of transportation that I as a state senator have worked to hold accountable. Okay, okay response, and by the way, you can look at each other. It, it's allowed. So John, the senator just put the blame for the MBTA at my feet when she is the one who has been on Beacon Hill for the last 10 years, making decision after decision after decision, or I should say non-decision, as that system has gotten worse and worse and worse. Issues at the MBTA are deeply personal to me. I am the only candidate in this race that regularly rides public transportation, and I will be the first statewide elected official to commute to Beacon Hill on the MBTA in over 30 years. I'm proud of that. I'm proud to have worked to make the MBTA better. And it's the folks on Beacon Hill, like Senator DiZoglio, that have left the situation where it is today with trains catching on fire and riders like me feeling unsafe. Response, if you want it, go ahead. The response is simply, John, is that uh, my opponent hails from Brookline and not everybody has access like my opponent does to a public transportation system that they get to jump on every morning on their way to work. Some people live in different parts of the state. We have Western Mass, we have the Cape, we have the Merrimack Valley, we have the North Shore. We have different areas of the state. Not everybody has that type of access. Uh, you know, this is probably one of the reasons why my opponent supports increasing your gas tax by 25 cents per gallon, something that he has stuck to, uh, that he has said he still supports. Uh, I vehemently oppose raising your gas tax by 25 cents per gallon, especially during this very challenging economic period. Uh, and I have supported the fair share tax amendment four times in the state Senate. I support that okay. ballot initiative in the fall. Uh, and I have actually led the charge on Beacon Hill, with all due respect, calling for uh, hearings in the state Senate uh, for oversight hearings of our MBTA, okay. which has occurred. So I led that effort successfully, holding this administration and the last administration, uh, where my opponent served as Assistant Secretary of Transportation, accountable once again to you, the taxpayers. Okay, take a few seconds, and I think I want to move on. John, there's one person on this debate stage who has voted to raise gas taxes, and that's Senator DiZoglio. I'm glad she also brought up the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts. She talked about working with them. The policy director for the Black Economic Council of Massachusetts is supporting me in this race. All right, let's move on. And again, during these open periods, you May can go... May I just respond very could, briefly? Yeah, all right. Thank you please, so much, briefly. just because I was named. Um, my opponent's actually incorrect. I actually voted to hold the line on the gas tax years ago when actually the previous administration that my opponent worked for tried to increase the regressive gas tax by six cents per gallon. I, as a state representative, voted to hold the line at three cents instead of increasing it to six cents. But since we're talking about voting records, John, there is something important that I want to bring up. Okay, go for it. Uh, my opponent is actually on the record, or so to say, not on the record, as having voted in even our last state Democratic primary. Now, we all remember when uh, Joe Kennedy and Ed Markey were on the ballot in our last state primary. We remember when uh, Donald Trump was stacking the court. Uh, my opponent actually isn't even on the record as having voted in that Democratic state primary, and I'm wondering uh, if we can get an explanation for why that's the case, because I think Go that's ahead. incredibly important. Let him respond. Like of course I voted, I voted in that election, and I'm proud to have done so. Uh, the Brookline town clerk has had some issues, which I have cleared up with them. We have an email chain on that. I have voted in every single Democratic primary at least since 2006. When I worked for Governor Deval Patrick and we helped elect him in that amazing grassroots effort to be the first African-American governor in Massachusetts history and only the second nationally, I voted in absolutely every single Democratic primary. And I'm, I'm very clear and sure that the record will show that when it's cleared up. The senator is basing your information likely off of something called Vote Builder, which is a system that we all have access to. It doesn't always reflect the reality of what the town clerk actually says. Go ahead. Actually, uh, with all due respect, I'm basing my information off of a copy attested by the clerk's office. Uh, this is from the city of Haverhill. We have documents from the town of Brookline as well. And we also have documents uh, from the Secretary of State's uh, database. So what my opponent is saying is that the town of Brookline, uh, other town clerks, and the Secretary of State's office uh, mistakenly have him not having voted in 2020 state primary. But what I find unfortunate as well um, is this conversation surrounding having voted in every single election or every single primary since 2006. My opponent's also not recorded as having voted in the 2016 state Democratic primary. So uh, okay. if my opponent could again offer an explanation for why this is the let, case, again... Let, let him try. Go ahead. I have voted in every single Democratic primary since 2006. That is very clear that I have done that. If there are issues with the Brookline town clerk, I'm sure, the issue, I'm sure that issue will be cleared up. We had a long-standing town clerk named Pat Ward, someone that I was very close with and friendly with. 
He did have some health issues that kept him out of the office for a significant period of time. There's a new town clerk in Brookline named Ben Kaufman. I am absolutely sure that they will clear up this issue. I have voted, I want to be very clear, I have voted in every single Democratic primary, at least since 2006. The senator has okay. not done her homework on this issue. All right, I'm Any reporter that wants to check my homework may do so by going to the Secretary of State's okay. database and calling the town of Brookline and also other clerks who have this information, uh, which I Great. have right here and I'm going to give to John. And, okay. I'm and I'm glad to share the email traffic that we have clearing up at least some of these issues with the Brookline town clerk well, many months ago before this race started. We'll look forward, I'm sure the press will look forward to reviewing all of that. Let's move on now. Thank you, candidates. We'll start here with you. Uh, Senator, most taxpayers would like the state auditor to be someone who appreciates the value of their dollars and is kind of allergic to wasteful spending. Are you personally frugal? And if so, give us an example, please. One minute. Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, I am. I actually, um, uh, many people know this, uh, I, I actually live with housemates in the city of Methuen in my home. Uh, just making sure uh, as a single woman uh, working, uh, coming from a working class family, having been born to a 17 year old single mom in the city of Methuen, growing up housing insecure, uh, I understand the challenges that many working families face. I went to community college. From there, I was able to get scholarships to attend Wellesley College, where I was so grateful to have been able to attend. But I was only able to do that, you know, based on uh, state government's investments in families like mine and the generosity of others. I would not be where I am today without those important investments. It's actually why I'm running for state auditors to make sure that we guard those investments because every wasted dollar is another child's future opportunity that's put at risk. It's another person who goes without health care. It's another person who struggles to find housing. It's another climate initiative that's unrealized. So all we right. need to protect our tax dollars. We need to make sure they're being spent efficiently and effectively so that all families in Massachusetts, regardless of our background, bank balance, or zip code, have representation on Beacon Health. Thank you. Personal frugality, Mr. Dempsey. Absolutely, John. I live in the first floor of a triple-decker with my amazing wife, Anna, and we are regularly in arguments about how to change the thermostat uh, in our house. I'm always asking her to put on another sweater. She's always pushing back. I know a lot of couples across Massachusetts have those same fights. Uh, but look, I think it's incredibly important that our state auditor cares about every single dollar in their public life and also in their private life. Uh, rebuttal of any kind, either of you? No? All right, let's move on. And then after this question, we'll take a short break. Um, one of the most frequently audited parts of state government in recent years has been Mass Health. That's the state's Medicaid program for the care of low-income citizens. Uh, we'll start with you here, Chris. Why do you believe that, it, that that expensive program is so prone to financial issues? And what ideas do you have for reducing them? One minute, please. John, I'm not sure I agree with your characterization that it's prone to issues. There are certainly issues in mass health, and we need to investigate them. We need to make sure that every single dollar is spent for the care that is needed for people that rely on that important social safety net program. But I think when you look at the broader scale of what that program is, it's about $20 billion a year. It's more than the entire state budget of Rhode Island or New Hampshire. But it provides essential health care to almost 50 percent of all children in Massachusetts. It's a really important program, making sure that people can be safe, healthy, and live lives to their fullest. I am not going to demonize or denigrate people who are recipients of Mass Health, but I am going to crack down on providers that are illicitly billing or using unfair practices to try to use those public dollars. We will crack down on that. One minute. So uh, the state auditor herself actually um, has done some great work on this, and I do commend our current auditor for the work that she has done on this issue, uh, making sure to save taxpayer dollars in the Mass Health program. Uh, as somebody who uh, did not always have health, health insurance growing up, I had many times when I needed health care and was not able to necessarily get access to, ended up in the emergency room uh, for basic things like, you know, colds or flus or, or whatnot. Um, growing up as a child without that type of access, having to rely on safety net services, I can tell you this is an incredibly important issue to me. Uh, but what the current auditor actually did was her office did some great reporting and auditing of the Mass Health program, saving millions of dollars. I think it was, you know, upwards of $20 million uh, by identifying things like just coding errors in the system where providers might be reporting, you know, uh, even by accident, 
uh, that a, a doctor provided a service when a nurse really provided it because there is a different rate mm -hmm. uh, that they get offered back as providers if they are coded inappropriately. Now okay. there can be technological issues, it can be on you know the part of the provider, uh, obviously there can be fraud and abuse there but it can also just be simple errors what? in coding so there's been some great work done on that. I'd like to continue that because when we see millions of dollars saved, all those dollars can go back into the Mass Health program to make sure that everyone has access to health care. She got a little extra time. You can take some if you want to rebut or respond. Look, I think this is a really important program, and we need to elect someone to this office that shares our Democratic Party values. Senator DiZoglio has one of the most socially conservative voting records in the entire Massachusetts state legislature. In the past, she's voted against gun control. She's voted against police reform. She's voted against transgender rights. Those are votes that are on the record and public, and you can review the roll calls. Do we want those values in our next state auditor digging into these state programs and using them as a weapon to tear down government and tear down people rather than building us all up? Response. My response is simply this. My opponent is trying to distort my voting record, which has actually been being done this entire campaign for the last year. And as I've said multiple times, I voted for the police accountability bill. I voted for the transgender accommodations bill. And I voted to support working families in our communities for the last 10 years, where we're not even sure if my opponent even bothered to vote in the last Democratic state primary election, where according to the records, he didn't, according to these records. At a time when Donald Trump was stacking the courts, we don't have my opponent on the record as having even voted in the Democratic primary. I find that extremely concerning. Furthermore, my opponent consistently attacks my votes on police accountability. There were a couple of amendments that I did not support during that debate, but I ended up voting for the final version of that bill. One of the amendments that I voted uh, to uh, redraft so that the amendment was made better was a bill concerning no-knock warrants. And our Attorney General Healy had actually contacted us in the state Senate and yeah. said that she actually had some concerns with that amendment because it would hurt child sex trafficking victims, unintentionally so, and that it needed a redraft. Okay. I stood with her on that decision because as a childhood survivor of sexual abuse and domestic violence, I appreciated the work of my colleagues to work on this important legislation, but we don't need to have these unintended consequences hurting child sex trafficking victims okay. while we are also working on police accountability. E we can have both protecting victims and delivering police equal, accountability. Equal time and then we must break. John, the reason why I'm supported by progressive Massachusetts, progressive Democrats of Massachusetts, the Bay State Stonewall Dems, which is the leading LGBTQ plus organization in the Democratic Party, and people like State Rep Russell Holmes of Mattapan, who have been leaders on police reform, the reason that they're supporting my campaign is that they have seen the senator's actual record, they've seen my values, and they're strongly on my side. Thank my you opponent both. is supported by Rep yep. Russell Holmes, who is anti-choice and has voted against a woman's right to choose. All right, let him respond. I find that unfortunate. Look, we have a big tent on this campaign. The senator is supported by State Rep Colleen Gary, who is also anti-choice. All right. So if we're going to play that game, we can play that game all day. All right, candidates, you can I'm resume that. You, you can resume that if you'd like. After we come back from this break, you're watching the debate for the Democratic nomination for state auditor, and we'll be back with more in a moment. Welcome back to the debate between the two Democratic candidates for state auditor on your September 6th ballot, and they are Chris Dempsey and Diana DeZuglio. All right, candidates, we really have time for probably just one more uh, back and forth here. But uh, as you know, the state auditor will play uh, a key role in determining how much of the surplus tax revenue will get rebated to taxpayers later on this year. Uh, this has been a source of controversy on Beacon Hill. House Speaker Ron Mariano claims legislators were blindsided by the governor's recent announcement that the state is about to trigger large tax rebates under that 1986 state law. I'd like to know, and who went first the last time? I lost track. I think that's it, your job, John. Yeah, I know. Out. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, thanks for pointing that out. I'm sorry. Okay. All right. So we'll start with you, Chris. Uh, do you believe? the speaker's claim. And if you do, is there any excuse for not knowing what was coming? One minute, please. It's the responsibility of people in the legislature to understand the laws. And it is extremely unfortunate and it's really harmful to taxpayers and to our commonwealth that those in the legislature missed it. Senator DeZoglio was part of that. She's been in the legislature for 10 years. She touts that experience proudly. And the fact that she did not raise this as a potential issue and is now promising that she would have caught it as state auditor 
doesn't really make a lot of sense. This is why we need someone in this role who has management and financial experience. I'm the only candidate in this race with a degree relevant to the job. I have an MBA. I'm proud of that. And the job of the auditor with this issue of 62F, Chapter 62F, is to crunch the numbers and put the data out there. I'm the only person qualified to do that in this race. Thank you. One minute, please. As a member of the state Senate, I have stood up to my leadership team and demanded that we stop waiting until the last minute to uh, vote on pieces of legislation, that legislators be granted time to read bills. I have demanded more transparency and accountability from my leadership team. And my leadership team is endorsing my opponent in this race. There are reasons for that. And it's because I've been standing up and speaking truth to power up on Beacon Hill for the last 10 years. Uh, we know that up on Beacon Hill, there are a handful of people that make decisions. Uh, there is not a system of shared leadership. The system up on Beacon Hill is one of uh, it's a very centralized process where there are uh, pretty much the governor, the speaker, the Senate president, and a few others are permitted to be in the back rooms where these decisions are made. The rest of the senators and legislators uh, then have to vote sometimes with less than a minute on different pieces of legislation that actually come up. I was very upset by the fact that this bill was put off to the last minute. I wrote a letter actually to my Senate president and to the Speaker of the House uh, calling for us yep. to come back into session as soon as is humanly possible to uh, suspend the rules so that the legislature can get back to work. We should not be on break right now. So we can get back to work to pack this okay. tax rebate package that I voted for that you all Thank deserve. Th uh, I actually I want to request that my opponent join with me in the call R on my Senate president and my speaker to let us get back to session and okay. to call us back to session. Will you join me, Look Chris? I'm so proud that more than 25 women legislators have endorsed my campaign, more than 40 state representatives, the senator's own colleagues. The senator voted to support Senate President Karen Spilka to be the leader of the Senate, to have her as the person heading up the Senate. That person is now endorsing me in this race. But it's not just legislative endorsements. Just this week, I earned the endorsement of Boston Mayor Michelle Wu. I've already earned the endorsement of incumbent state auditor Suzanne Bump, who is the person who knows the job the best and the first woman to ever hold the office. Not to mention the thousands of delegates at the Massachusetts State Convention who voted to support my campaign in a victory statewide. The grassroots are with me, Auditor Bump is with me, Mayor Michelle Wu is with me, and 25 of the Senator's women colleagues are with me. Go ahead. Of course my opponent has the support of Mayor Michelle Wu and others. He lives within walking distance of the mayor. I have the support of all of my local mayors as well. Mayor Brian DePena of Lawrence, Mayor Neil Perry of Methuen, Mayor Jim Parentini of Haverhill, Mayor, mayor Sakari Chow of Lowell. The list goes on. Uh, but we are not talking right now about political endorsements. We're talking about sending tax rebates back to working families who need those tax rebate, rebates desperately during a time when inflation is through the roof. Gas taxes, uh, gas tax, excuse me, the gas prices are through the roof. You know, we're talking about getting the tax dollars back to you, friends, and passing an economic relief bill. And my question to my opponent was not about all of the political establishment uh, that he's well connected with and how many endorsements he has. It was about whether or not he will join my effort to call on that Democratic establishment okay. to make sure that they release your tax dollars by going back to work in the legislature so that we can get this bill done so that you all get the refunds that you deserve, the rebates that you deserve, yep. and so we pass our economic development bill. That's my question, Chris. Will you join me? I don't think Mayor Wu's endorsement of my campaign has anything to do with the fact that she lives in the town next door. I think it has to do with the work that I've put in on improving transportation, on building a more sustainable and equitable commonwealth, and most importantly about the values that she and I share. As we said, Senator DiZoglio has one of the most conservative voting records in the entire Massachusetts legislature. That is not the future that we want for our commonwealth, and that is not what we want in our Democratic Party. Vote for the person that has and shares your democratic values and is supported by people like Mayor Wu, Auditor Bump, and again, the grassroots of the party with a victory at the convention statewide. We had the support of Western Massachusetts at that convention. We had the support of Metro West. We had the support of Worcester. We had the support of every single Senate district in the city of Boston. We are building a big tent campaign. Everyone's invited, and I ask for your vote on September 6th. With all the respect on all of these political endorsements that my opponent continues to tout instead of answering the question, um, we all have political friends who, you know, uh, might endorse us for whatever reasons, having worked together, 
uh, having done projects together, having served together, of course, we all bring our endorsements to the table. My opponent refuses to address the question of whether or not he will join me in calling for the legislature to come back into session so that working families can get the tax rebates that they desperately need and that they desperately deserve. And to address the question about uh, or excuse me, to address the, the issue of, of voting for someone and all these people saying to vote for someone uh, like my opponent, I don't think that voters should bother to vote for someone if they haven't bothered to vote okay. themselves in state primaries, right. uh, which again, my opponent is not on the record multiple times in recent years okay. as having even gone to pull a ballot at a time when we made voting the most accessible that it's been in history with mail-in ballots. All right. Our disabled, our elderly, our immunocompromised took the time to vote in this election. Let, let's let him respond, please. John, facts matter. And facts matter especially when you're running to be the next state auditor. The whole point of the job is to uncover the facts. The senator apparently came to today's debate saying, I haven't voted in every election since 2000, whatever she said. Six, 2006. Yeah, that's, that's not accurate. I voted in every Democratic primary since 2006. Her evidence, apparently, that she held up earlier in this debate was a statement from the Haverhill Town Clerk, a place I have never lived before. So when you're going to be the next state auditor, you have to come with the facts and the data. That's what I did when I led the grassroots no Boston Olympics effort, taking on the establishment, taking on that network of corporate interests that were trying to push a bid that was gonna cost us $15 billion. You know this, John, because you followed that debate. We dug in with the facts and the data, we put them in front of the people of Massachusetts and we let the people decide that's what's gonna happen in this election too. And I ask for your vote again on September 6th. Just for clarification purposes, um, actually, Chris, um, it was actually the, the town of Brookline. It was uh, your own town clerk that, that emailed uh, the documents that we have. I just happened to have a printout from Haverhill uh, here this morning just because that's local to me. Um, but actually, your, your town did email us those documents. And I do think it's important that anybody running for statewide office, especially in such an important election again, when Donald Trump was stacking the courts that anybody running for statewide office bother to vote in a state primary election. We all know how important uh, that election was during a very crucial time in our history. This was only a couple of years ago, okay. and I find it incredibly uh, disappointing. Okay, we're down to our right about our final minute here. Uh, rather than try to squeeze in another question, why don't you each take half uh, to make a closing pitch? We'll start with you, Senator DiZoglio. Thank you so much. Well, my name is Diana DiZoglio. I am a state senator. I hail from the city of Methuen. I'm running to be your next state auditor to ensure that working families like ours uh, get accountability from and access to our state government, regardless of our family background, our bank balance, or our zip code. Like I said, I was born to a 17-year-old single mom, went through public schools, ended up graduating from Middlesex Community College, uh, thanks to investments made through our state government, uh, ended up earning scholarships to become the first in my family to graduate. I know what it's like to struggle to make ends meet and to have to be scrappy. I want to make sure that the tax dollars of working families like ours are not being wasted, are not being abused, are not being used for things like taxpayer-funded non-disclosure agreements, for example, by powerful politicians seeking to silence victims of harassment, discrimination, and abuse, something that my opponent actually voted for as a member of the Brookline Town Meeting, where there was an opportunity to okay. vote that NDAs be banned except for when the victim requested them. My opponent voted to uphold those okay. uh, NDAs in town meeting as a member. Uh, I think we need an auditor who is transparent and accountable, who refuses to use silencing tactics and is going to work to increase transparency and accountability and equity for all in the Commonwealth, Thank not just Beacon Hill's most powerful politicians, who my opponent Thank is supported by. Thank you. Equal time, Mr. Dempsey. I'm Chris Dempsey, and I'm running to be your next state auditor. I'm the son of public school teachers, and I saw over the course of their career my parents digging into their own pockets to pay for school supplies for their students as we know public school teachers across the Commonwealth do to this day. That's not right. And that happens because we don't have our priorities right on Beacon Hill. We don't count every single dollar the way that we should. I'm running to be your next state auditor to stand up to protect the public interest and to make state government work better. I've done that serving for Governor Deval Patrick and also as the co-founder of the grassroots group No Boston Olympics, which took on powerful corporate interests, got outspent 1,500 to one but was successful at protecting your tax dollars. I'm proud to be endorsed in this race by the Mass Democratic Party, by incumbent state auditor Suzanne Bump, by Boston Mayor Michelle Wu, and 25 
women legislators in this race. I'd be honored to have your support on September 6th. Thank you so much. Thank you both very much for being here, and thank you for watching. If you missed any part of this debate or uh, you uh, want to watch the full debate because you're watching the uh, truncated WBZ TV version, you can go to our website, cbsboston.com. And whatever you do, don't forget to get out and cast your vote in the Tuesday, September 6th uh, Democratic and Republican primaries. Democrats and independents can vote in this race. And then watch your vote count on WBZ TV News and on CBS News Boston, as well as on cbsboston.com. I'm John Keller. Thanks for watching.